No, we're talking about being fitted for a murder and fitted by experts. Frank Holloway, you will now be charged with the murder of Sam Jones. He was suspended from police duties effective immediately. His name's Brian Atkins. Brian Murray Atkins, cleaner. And this is the guy Skip Town reckons are setting you up. This guy was standing behind me at the train station yesterday. This is the guy who pushed me. If I had to change my name, I might have changed it to Frank. After you. Oh, funny joke. <laughs> How are you holding up? Oh, you know, enjoying the last days of freedom. You have a bit more faith in me than that. Yeah, it was before Ronnie was shot. What have we got now? One witness dead, one arrested for murder. I tell you, Travis is going to walk. Listen, we know the killer wears a distinctive brand of American hiking shoe. We're talking about a fellow who set me up for murder. He broke into my house and planted a gun. I mean, he's not going to leave his name and address with some retailer where he buys his killing shoes. We uh, sent a photo of Brian Atkins to every police station in the metropolitan area. We'll find him. We'll get him. You look after yourself. Oh, oh Rachel. I've uh, done a check on all Atkins' known associates, and there's a Mick Harley Richards who could fit the bill. He served time with Atkins six years ago for armed robbery, and by all accounts, they were pretty pally in jail. Atkins could be using his place as digs. Thank you. Rachel, Brady's here. Hello, Inspector. Detective. You were specifically instructed not to involve yourself in Frank Holloway's problems. Now, Brian Atkins, why do you think he was involved in Ronnie Jefferson's murder? I also think he murdered Sam Jones and set Frank up to take the fall. Don't play games with me, Rachel. I played enough of those with your ex-partner. Now, how did you get Atkins' name? Norman Town. You spoke to him yourself. He's the only one who's given us anything that makes any sense. Now, Jeff, I've got an address here that Atkins might be at. Do you reckon I could get that put under surveillance, please? Rachel, all you've got is reputation. You can't tie the gun in with the murder weapon. You can't place him at the scene of the crimes. No, what I've got is the same set of footprints, both at Sam Jones's murder and Ronnie Jefferson's murder. Now, I reckon if we find out the sort of shoes Atkins wears on the job, then we've got our man. This is my investigation, Detective, and as far as I'm concerned, we've got the man who killed Sam sort of Jones. Evidence. Can you? Homicide called there's been another shooting with a Ruger Mini 14, the same type that killed Jefferson. He's killed someone else. Yeah, well, the gun has a five-year-old girl. Mini 14, 2 to 3 calibre rifle, 15 rounds, five still in the clip. Ballistics will be able to tell you if it's the weapon you're looking for. He was playing with his sister. Just found it lying up on the street. The details? I'm Detective Goldstein. Do you want to tell me what happened? We were playing aliens. I was a space ranger and Randy was the invader from Mars. Are they going to put me in jail? No, of course not. 
It's an accident. Now tell me, did you see someone throw the gun in the vacant lot? Or a car speed away or someone hurry away? Mandy isn't coming back, is she? Hiking shoe. It's called a brevet. I'm looking for a list of all the outlets that make special orders over the last Look, six months. Here's Frank's place. Yeah, sure, I'll hold. There's Harley Richards. And there's a vacant lot. Hey. Oh, that bastard might as well have shot that little girl himself. Now, Harley Richards, do you reckon he could have supplied the guns? No, oh, well, he has no prize for firearms, but um, I'll have another look, see what I can come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, Rousey put pressure on ballistics. They've come through with a match. We got the gun that killed Jefferson. All we got to do is match it with Atkins. Have a quick one. Oh, yeah. Michael's waiting. We think we know where Atkins is. The dogs are off the place. They're going to contact me as soon as they see him. Where is he? If he's there, we'll bring him in. I could kiss you for that. Anyway, we're not in the home stretch yet, Frank. Yeah, we got more than we had yesterday. Yeah. Now, you look after yourself. You haven't got me backing you up. Ah, I'm a big girl. I can look after myself. You've been on my feet all day today. And we're getting close to catching a mass murderer. I think I'm filling Holloway's shoes in pretty nicely, even if I do say so myself. I might even be up for accommodation after this. Well, Mr. Accommodation, looks like the owner of those shoes would like to have a word with you. This Atkins bloke, the one they call the cleaner. Yeah. But you know, he chops his victims up and dumps the parts in so many different places that there's never any hope of finding them all. Yeah, that's something to that effect, yeah. yeah. And some of the victims, they're not quite dead before he starts to dismember them. You see, this sort of thing, like it scares the living crap out of me. But you're backing up me, old partner, so I just wanted to say that if anything happened to her, there'd be one more bloke you'd have to worry about if you get my drift. Yeah, I get your drift. come up to late afternoon anyway. Well, you don't want to take any chances. We pay good money for this trip. We're staying here till we get what we came for. Oh, mate, I wouldn't mind some going back in. I'm feeling a bit crooked now. Would you mind taking him in? Out of a mutiny if I tried. OK. Just this once. We're not a cab service here. <laughs> The dogs took their shots early this morning. They're the first sightings they've had of Atkins. And if Richards is in the house, he hasn't been seen. I've got to be the one to bring him in, Jeff. Rachel, if anybody brings him in, it'll be the SPG. Guess what sort of shoes he's wearing. Not. Excuse me, Detective Goldstein. There's a man waiting for you downstairs. Could you take a message? He says his name is Brian Atkins. Want to see me? Saw your blokes watching the house. Figured you might want to talk. I wouldn't mind taping this conversation, Mr. Atkins. How do you feel about that? Come on now, Detective. You and I both know I don't have to be here. I thought we'd have a casual chat, like friends. Friends. Make a living hope, can't he? So, what are you going to chat to us about today, Mr. Atkins? Sam Jones's murder? Sam Jones. Wasn't he the Joker shot by that sidekick of yours? 
I would have thought the force would provide you with a partner a little more stable than Frank Holloway. Frank was fitted for the murder, and we both know it. Ooh, looks like I hit a raw nerve. Is that what this is all about? You think I killed Sam Jones? Did you? <laughs> what do you know about Ronnie Jefferson's murder? What should I know about it? Well, a five-year-old girl was killed by her brother when he found a Ruger Mini 14 in a vacant lot not far from where Jefferson was shot. Ruger Mini 14. Assault rifle, isn't it? Used for shooting pigs. You really are a smug bastard, aren't you? You're going down for killing Jones and Jefferson. Because we know you did it. If you think you've got a whole lot of mates on the inside helping you out, then think again. Detective, I think if Mr Atkins is not going to tell us why he's here, then we've got better things to do. Of course you do, Detective. Finding a way to save your partner, for one. Oh, it's been nice chatting. Next time you're passing, drop in. I'll see myself out. Running rings why around us. Give him a name. Hey, why didn't you just tell him about Skip Town? Is... Well, maybe he didn't hear me. Jeff, the guy's an idiot. You've got to get rid of him. He's doing the best he can. And I want to search Atkins' house. You'll never get a warrant. The best we can do is keep him under surveillance. We won't be able to do that for much longer either. Just let me know. Rachel, I've uh, been worrying about what I said to Atkins. You don't think he understood what I was saying? You just keep your mouth shut. Look, I understand the governor can't come to the phone. All I'm saying is Norman Town's life is in danger. So you just, you just make sure you pass that on. Did you go see to see the governor? Sure, take a seat, thanks. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I got your message, but uh, well, unfortunately, arrived too late. Norman Town was found uh, ten minutes ago in his cell, swinging from the rafters. I'm sorry. Gavin probably thought he could shake Atkins up or something. I don't know. Nothing shakes Atkins up. Yeah. Closest thing to Steven Seagal I've ever met. Now Skip had two months to go, as if he'd bloody hang himself. We've got to link those guns to Atkins. It's mate Richards. Ah, oh, yeah, he could have been a supplier, but he's not talking. What about a vehicle? I mean, Atkins must have been driving something. Place him with a vehicle that was seen at the crime scene. Yeah, nothing registered in his name. I mean, we're checking with the rental companies, but I'd say he borrowed it off a mate. The shoes? Not enough to get a search warrant. I tell you what, knock an old skip off. That sent the message out loud and clear. No one's going to speak. You're going to have a hell of a time getting anything out of anyone. Mr. Morosky will talk to you, but come alone. You know where? Yeah, yeah. You sure? No, I know where it is. See you there. Right. Better be important, Frank. You dragged me away from dinner with my local member of parliament. So what is it? Looking for a job? <laughs> Information. 
In exchange for what? Information about your daughter. Angelique? What do you know about Angelique? You see, I'm looking for the name of a gun dealer. Now, I figured a man in your position shouldn't be too hard to come up with a name. You've got two seconds before I toss you over the side, all the way. One of your boys, Alexi. How can I put it? <clears throat> He's been a bit more than just a bodyguard. Alexi? He's 30. She's only 16. You know those piano lessons he's driving her to? Put her this way. I don't think she's learning too much about pianissimo. You're a liar. We've had Alexi under surveillance for distributing smack. We know his every move. And I tell you, some of those moves are on your daughter. Tell Holloway where to find Ratso Talbot. How are you? I'm your worst nightmare, pal. Let's go inside. Just like the rest of your stuff, eh? Unregistered and untraceable. What do you want? A couple of answers. Brown hiking shoes. They're an American brand called a Brevet. Uh, size ten and a half. Could you check your records and see if there's been any special orders over the last 12 Detective months? Detective Goldstein. Yeah, the bloke has sold Atkins the guns. The rat's so Talbot. He's expecting you. No one give you any trouble. Where do we find him? Unit 127 Norris Street, Balmain. Got it. How'd you get onto him, Frank? Frank? On our way, Gavin. I've got no more shooters. Can we just go? And I've been sitting here half the night waiting for you. What's you got in the bag? Stuff I'll need for when I'm inside. Let's just have a look. Come on, mate. Let's have a look. Not planning on asking for bail, Mr. Talbot. I reckon I'll be safe on the inside, don't you? Do you recognise this weapon, Mr. Talbot? Yeah, it's a 9 millimeter semi-automatic. Made in 1903. Real little beauty, that one. You know, fit your hand like a glove. And so accurate, you could shoot the eye. Yeah, I don't want to buy it from you. We just want to know whether it was in your possession. Yeah. Got it back in 91. How do you know it's your gun? It's got a chip on the button. Left-hand side. I could, I could tell that out of, a, out of a thousand of the same make. And uh, when did you last see it? Mm. About three weeks ago. Sold it to a bloke. Yeah, along, along with the Ruger. That's the uh, weapon Mark B? Yeah, sold him both of them. On the same day. Could you be a bit more specific? Sunday. Sunday the 19th, about 10 o'clock at night. This guy called Harley bring him over. What was the name of the man who bought them from you? Look, <clears throat> what more do you want from me, huh? Blood. Listen, mate, I was under the impression you were going to cooperate with us. He's known my reputation as the cleaner. I don't know his name. But I knew who he was. Everybody knows. Oh, no, we need a name. We need a name. Atkins. Brian Atkins. Look, you promised me a single salary. Right. Even in remand, you promised I'd be on my own. I'd be looked after. Listen, mate, don't you worry. You are going to be treated like pure gold. Believe me. Hey, Henry, can you lock these up for me, thanks? My office, thanks, Rachel. Why wasn't I informed about this earlier? Well, we only found out about it this morning ourselves. From where? That's not really the point, is it? The point is we've now got enough on Atkins for a search warrant. You've got one low life's word against another. I find this whole confession suspect. According to you, you couldn't find anyone to point the finger at this Atkins character. I mean, suddenly out of the blue, you got Ratso Talbot happily saying he sold him the guns. Now, that makes me wonder what you promised him. Or what you threatened him with. Are you accusing me of intimidation? No, I'm warning you, Detective. If I find out your methods have been untoward, I won't hesitate investigating you as well. Could you wait in my office for a minute, Rachel? I think we should put our personal feelings on hold over this, don't you, Tony? Personal matters don't enter into this, Jeff. 
Cops like Holloway don't have a place in the service anymore. I happen to think he's quite capable of killing Jones and we've got all the evidence we need. If you're wrong, you're making a bloody big mistake. How did you get onto Talbot? A bit of digging in the right places. Anonymous phone call. Nothing to do with Holloway sticking his nose in, is it? He's the one facing jail, Jeff. Mm, he's also the one on suspension. I don't want to find out that he's been working behind the scenes. Oh, no. Detective Sykes and I are doing OK, aren't we, Gavin? Yeah, that's right, sir. You got any idea why this Ratso character is the only one not afraid of Atkins? Couldn't be because he's been made to feel more afraid of someone else, could it? Oh, nothing could be more frightening than Atkins, could it? Now I'm going to organise that search warrant. Detective Goldstein, you Michael Richards? Yeah. We've got a warrant to search this place. Suit yourself. You haven't got Brian Atkins staying with you, have you? No, I did have. Not anymore. Left this morning. Don't know where he's gone, neither. Got to get inside his head, Rachel. Start thinking the way he thinks. He got careless. He botched killing Jefferson. So he was forced to take a pot shot at him. So we know that when he's pushed into a corner, he hasn't got time to play by his own rules. What are you up to? I'm just getting used to thinking in a confined space. Are you planning something that I should know about? When I do that? How did you find out about Rats Hotel, but, eh? Just lucky. And how did you make him more afraid of you than of Atkins? I appealed to his public sense of duty. Plus the fact I told him you'd keep an eye on him. Police launch, Nemesis. This is DKG, Sydney Water Police. Go ahead, Sydney Water Police. That fishing boat you took people off yesterday has gone over. You're kidding! No, they got caught in a storm last night. The call's just come through. Copy that. We're on our way. Ten degrees to port, Tommy! Nemesis. Go ahead, Nemesis. We have sighted the fishing boat. Harpy is in attendance. We'll attempt the rescue. Copy that, Nemesis. Hang up, fellas. You all right? All right, now I want you to roll onto your back. Let me do the swimming and keep your hands away from my neck. Come on, mate. Same again, down here. I gotcha. Settle deeper into the water. Looks like it could go any minute. Copy that, Tommy. Hey, he's alive. He's in there. All right, let's get him out before she goes down. I can see him. He might take this. Give me one. Come on! Yes! We got him, Sakti! We got him! Yes! Well 
done, Tommy. VKG Sydney Water Police clear. I'm sending Angelique to boarding school in Victoria. Well, that's one way for her to get over Alexi. Alexi won't be bothering her anymore. He won't be bothering anyone anymore. Was my information as reliable as yours? Oh, yeah, good enough. Now, this bloke Ratso, he sold guns to the cleaner. Well, he works for Charlie Hayes. You aware of that? But you see, he's getting careless. So what if I was to tell you that a witness had come forward in the Jefferson murder? And I'm going to make damn sure that no one gets to him this time. And you want me to spread that fairy story around? Do you, Holloway? See, it gets back to the right ears. Hmm? Well, you know, these things, they have a way of getting around. <laughs> so you'll be the cheese in the trap. I like that, Frank. I lose him or I lose you. Either way, I win. <laughs> now, apart from Richards, is there anyone you know who Atkins was working with or for? Someone he could doss down with? No one's going to touch him. It's too hot. What do you mean? You ought to know. You know, you got a witness to say who, who shot Ronnie Jefferson. Where'd you hear that? It's all over the place. People are saying the cleaner's lost it, you know, stuffed up, he's too smart for his own good. What people? Look, haven't I given enough to you guys? You know, I know what happened to the other guy that talked to you. I heard it, I know. You know, you, you can't trust anyone in here. Listen, you're being watched around the clock. No one, no one is going to touch you. Do you understand? Now tell me what you know. Well, Marovsky's blokes say that the cleaner's stuffed up on the Jefferson shooting and, and Charlie Hayes is not too happy about it. And reckons you blokes have got a witness ready to spill his guts. Business with Tomek Moravsky, eh? Now come on, Holloway, this witness we're supposed to have. What sort of deal have you done with Moravsky to make him spread rumours like that, eh? No deal. You going somewhere? Yeah, I thought I'd go away for a couple of days, let you sort out this mess. Where? Oh, a little place by the water. Borrowed it from a friend. What friend? No one you'd know. Oh, yeah. And when Atkins comes after this witness of yours, how are you going to catch him with your bare hands? Rachel, you should go back to the office. You shouldn't be sticking your neck out on my... Listen, mate, I have stuck my neck out so far from you, I'm surprised my head is still on. Now, where is that gun? Where would I get a gun? Listen, I'm telling you, Holloway, if you do not let me in on what you're planning, then I cannot help you. Fine, because I'm not asking you to help me. Now, go away and get on with your own life and let me make something perfectly clear. I'm on my own in this. I don't need anybody's help. You understand? Don't do this, Frank. This is really, really stupid. You know where the front door is. Just up the hall. I know all the properties that Tomek Moravsky owns. So I'm talking about building sites, holiday homes, anything that's out of the way, anything at all. It's on a need to know basis? Yeah, I really need to know, but you don't. What? Well, I take it this is about Frank. Look, Helen, I'm not asking you to get involved. All I'm asking for is some information, okay? Rachel, just don't start issuing orders as if you're the only one who's worried about Frank, because I'm here to tell you you're not. Look, I'm sorry, it's just... This is really getting a bit out of hand. And I think Frank's holed up in some property on a stakeout and, um... I just want to know where he is. All right, I need to get into some classified files. Just give me some time, OK? Thank you.
surprised you recognize me. It's been so long. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Michael, isn't it? Hey, do you mind if... Um, can I have a Cooper's? If we stay here for a bit, I've just... That's easy on with Frank. I think we'll make it. I think we'll make it. job and I think what you do is great. Yeah, time consuming but great. I know, it's been a horrible couple of weeks, I'm sorry. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, hey, how do you put it? <laughs> You're trying to let me down gently, aren't you? What? You want to break up? I knew it. No. I knew it was coming. I knew it. <laughs> That's not what I was trying to say at all. I was just looking for the right moment and of course with you there never is one. So here goes, I'm asking you to marry me. Sergeant Blackmore's found that address you've been looking for. Oh. She says it's a bit of a long shot. Do you want to be left alone? Yes. <laughs> I don't want you to give up the job. You know, I know how important it is to you and I'm proud of the way you go about it. So, have you been a wife? Michael, you've got incredible timing. You know, I work. I work really long hours. I can live with it. You really are a fantastic guy, you know. You're really you're fun and you're gorgeous. Rich, too. Yeah. But we really are very, very different people, and our lives are really very different. I don't think I can get married. I'm sorry. Still, uh, never have pulled any punches, have you? I promise I'll make you happy. Oh, no one can promise that. I can try, can't I? Check out that address. Don't be foolish, Frank. You know I'll get a shot off. And you know I will. Now I'm just gonna walk out of here. Stay here, call for backup. Police is Detective Goldstein, signal one. That's the old defense department, East Head Road.
pull the trigger, Frank. Go on. Show us what you got. Don't tip me, Atkins. The DPP's decided not to offer any evidence when the case against Jones goes to mention. Atkins' shoes match the prints left at Jones and Jefferson. So you're in the clear. And where's Rachel? Oh, probably still working on her story as to why she was with you when you killed Atkins. He came after me. She was on the scene. She's a good cop. She doesn't need someone like you tainting her career. You know, Brady, I ought to see you for unlawful arrest. You know why cops like you get into trouble, Frank? Your methods leave you wide open. Which makes you a danger to the service and a danger to the people you work with. Now you got out of this one. Okay. But you won't always be this lucky. Think about it. Listen, you should lock your door. Anyone could walk in. I'm thinking of applying for transfer. I mean, obviously, we can't work together. Did all I could for you, but in the end, you have to do everything by yourself. Rachel, there was no other way. I was looking at a 25-year stretch, and doing it by the book wasn't an option. You're saying I'm not good enough? Oh, come on. Look, I know what you did for me. Jeez. Jeez, I know you put your job on the line, but... Look, it didn't matter what you did, they were always one step ahead. Look, I understand that, but why couldn't you have told me what you were up to? Why couldn't you just do that? All right, supposing Brady found out you knew, there's your career gone. Look, I don't want you giving up your job for me. I would have. I know you would have. I don't want you to. All right, but if you ever, ever do that to me again, I am out of here. Do you understand me? I understand. 